Today, we're talking about La Literatura de Cordel. Now, ever since I interviewed Brown Professor Emeritus Eileen Landé in episode 77 about arts integration, I've been wanting to return to this one particular concept she shared, because I think it's an amazing go-to that should be inside every single ELA classroom. It's called Literatura de Cordel. It comes from Brazil, and it has so many creative possibilities. It's a simple idea, stringing up a line across your classroom and filling it with different types of media. It's so easy to use, but so full of rich possibilities. In today's episode, let's talk about how the Cordel was first used in Brazil and how you can use it as an effective go-to tool now. We're diving into 15 different ways to use La Literatura de Cordel, and I bet you'll be able to think of 15 more by the end of the episode. Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and one-pagers, project-based learning, and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini makerspace to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line. Creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator. And while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. So let's talk about how La Literatura de Cordel first got started. It is just what it sounds like, literature on a line. Writers in Brazil would bring their work to a marketplace and hang it up with the pages out for people to read as they wandered by. So you know how in reading displays we talk about covers facing out and how that makes the book much more exciting for students? This is taking it one step further to pages facing out. Now, Eileen Landé at Brown and um, her partner, Kurt Wooten, who worked on the arts integration project together, um, took this concept and ran with it. They started using it in the classroom. So let's look at one example of how Eileen used it, although she said they used it in so many different ways and they loved it. She was teaching a book that combined poems with portrait photography. The book was called My People, and it was by Gordon Parks. So she opened up the book, and she photocopied the poems inside, and she photocopied the portraits, the faces that went along with those poems, and she hung them up all over the room along her cordel. Then she invited kids to stand up and walk around looking until they found a paper they wanted to go deeper with. Maybe it was a face that just really called to them or a poem that had a line that they really loved. So then they could actually just unclip it from the wall, take it back to their desk, find a partner, and talk about what they were seeing or write about the piece that they chose. So what? So why is this such a rich concept for the classroom? We're going to talk about a whole bunch of different uses. But first, let's just talk about the nitty gritty. How are you going to make a cordel? This is super simple. When I make one, I like to grab command hooks because I just appreciate how they never fall off my wall. So I go to Target or Ikea or Michaels or whatever, and I get some command hooks. I get some string or ribbon and a bunch, a bunch of those tiny little clips. Um, They look like clothespins, but they're, you know, a a millimeter (laughs) or five millimeters or whatever. My math is not great, but they're just tiny and you string them, you hang them, you clip them all along your ribbon so that you can easily put up, you know, 30 different pieces of paper along the ribbon. Now, if you want to cover a whole wall in these, I highly recommend it. That In that case, you want to zigzag your ribbon back and forth. You might need three, four, or five command hooks so that you can create a zigzag stripe across your wall. Okay, so you've got this in your classroom somewhere. What's What are some ways you can use it? Number one, Hang complimentary visuals that you want to change out all the time. Now, I am a huge fan of using the environment in your classroom as the third teacher. This is a concept that comes from the Reggio Emilia educational philosophy, which I love. Um, And it's just the sense that like your students are learning from the world around them, from the room around them all the time. And if you can make that 
uh, your friend. If you can make your room (laughs) help you with what you're teaching, that's fantastic. So maybe you're teaching MLA. You want to put up examples of great MLA citations. You want to put up some posters and you want to put up little cards that, that kind of show how to cite a certain source. You have those up. Then as your students are working on their MLA, you can say like, oh, feel free to go and check your citation concept um, against one of the posters on the wall. You could even grab it, bring it back to your desk. Or if you're working on a website citation and you're not sure, like grab this card and take it back to your desk, you can reference your visuals. And because they're not taped to your wall or stapled to your bulletin board, students can just grab them off the Cordell and take them back back to their desk. So another example of this, maybe you're introducing choice reading. You want to use use your Cordell to have book blurbs and a whole bunch of different um, book covers. And students can walk along the Cordell just quickly browsing and see 30 different books and little tiny um, reviews of them. And then they can go over to your shelves and find those books if they want to. It just, it just provides this, this easy variety. Um, when you want to create a visual, it takes like two minutes to put your visuals up on the Cordell instead of this elaborate process of tape rolls and staples or, or um, push pins and, and borders and whatnot on your bulletin board. Okay, number two, use your Cordell um, to provide QR codes for interactive learning. So maybe you want students to be exploring podcasts or interactive websites or museum sites or audio essays or videos, but you want to give them choice. You can print labeled QR codes to hang on your Cordell and then let them walk along and snag one that interests them. Uh, I can think of so many situations where you could do this when you're trying to expose them to a, a certain topic online or a certain um, type of genre, but it really doesn't matter so much which particular one they see or listen to or read. You want something that they're interested in. Um, in that case, using your Cordell allows you to provide all this wonderful choice. Number three, you can use your Cordell to provide scaffolding. Let's say, for example, you're approaching a writing project and some of your students would really benefit from having some sentence stems or having some really clear structure for their paragraphs. You can provide those kind of scaffolds on cards along your Cordell. You could even provide like lists of possible vocabulary. Um, And then you can invite them anytime they want. Like, hey, if you're struggling to find good verbs for your um, you know, sensory imagery piece, feel free to grab one of the example lists from the Cordell. Or if you would like to see a model of a, a great introductory paragraph structure, feel free to grab, you know, one of the orange cards from the Cordell. And in that way, kids who want the scaffolds can grab them and kids who don't want them don't have to, but they're there and it's really simple to grab them off the wall, take them to their desk and then put them back when they're done. Number four, hang poetry. This one's not too far from the original concept, right? But how fun would it be to collect your favorite contemporary poems from anywhere, from everywhere, and hang them up on the wall during your poetry unit? You can use them in so many different ways throughout the unit. You could invite students to bring in their favorite poems too. Or maybe you're doing a an inquiry driven unit and, and you're approaching an essential question and you've just started to collect all these different lovely poems or articles. Um, you can put them up and then when the time comes, when you feel like they would fit in well, you can invite groups of students to choose one, take it to their group, you know, do whatever activity relates and then hang it back up at the end. Number five, hang mentor texts. There are so many ways to go with this one. I am just going to give you one example, and I hope it will make you feel so inspired. (laughs) You'll think of many more of your own. But let's say, for example, that you're doing an infographics unit, and Mm -hmm. students are going to be creating an infographic. You're going to talk about good sources. You're going to talk about design. You're going to teach them how to use Canva. Um, You're going to be doing research Uh, into some topic that's really helpful for what you're up to in your class. One of your first assignments could be to ask students to find and bring in the coolest infographic they can, something that they find really inspiring with really great information and good citation. So they bring that in. Instead of you collecting them all um, and putting them in a folder on your desk and grading them, have them hang them up on your Cordell. Now, after one class, you know, you have 30 up. After two classes, maybe you have 60 up. 
Now you have all these incredible models that you can use throughout your unit. So if students are struggling a little bit in their brainstorming process, say like, hey, go take a walk around the Cordell and like look at, look at some of the different types of infographics you see and grab one that you find inspiring and take it back to your desk. Or maybe they're not sure how to squish in their citations in their, in their infographic page. They're trying to figure out design-wise, how can they fit it in? Hey, go look at how you know these professional digital media journalists put their citations in and be inspired. Go, go grab a couple of example models and take them back to your desk. Um, or maybe they're trying to figure out color scheme or fonts. They don't really understand how to design well for their viewer. Again, have them stand up, <laughs> go over to the Cordell, find three well-designed infographics that they think are amazing and bring them back for inspiration. I just think this can enrich your whole, you know, one week or two weeks that you're spending with infographics to have these incredible models all over the wall. And the fact that students can unclip them in one second and then hang them back up at the end so that they're there for the next student. It's just, it removes all the headache for you of kind of keeping track of all those mentor texts and trying to get them into the right hands. All right, number six is kind of an extension, hang galleries of former students' work. So if you're like me, you have like this giant box full of amazing old student work, the storyboards, the blackout poetry, the one-pagers, the photos of hexagonal thinking webs, the amazing argument papers. These things are, are sitting somewhere, right? And you get them out when you remember, when you can. But what if you hang them up? What if when students walk in and they're about to create their first ever blackout poetry, you already have 25 examples hanging on your Cordell and it took you three minutes to put them up? I get really excited, you guys. <laughs> I think this I think this just makes it so much easier to put these visuals, to put these models in front of students. And then you can make room also on one part of your Cordell to be putting up your students' work, your current students' work as it starts coming in. And then you just have this kind of huge, amazing exhibition of all this great work. All right, number seven, you can use your Cordell as a digital bookshelf. Maybe you're short on classroom books, physical classroom books, and you've been working really hard to get your students set up on Libby or Sora through your local or classroom library. You can hang book covers and quick blurbs on your Cordell with QR codes that link to the location online where students can check them out. And then when you're moving into choice reading, as well as letting students visit your library and look at your paper books, you can also let them visit your Cordell um, and consider digital books. And if you want to, you can start to incorporate in like student review cards that you can hang right next to the QR code and book cover and you can enrich it in that way. Or you can let kids take post-its and put up like super fast reviews, like fill out five stars or four stars with one sentence and just attach that to the wall next to the book blurb and QR code. Um, and in that way, it, the, the line just kind of keeps getting enriched. Number eight, use your Cordell to highlight what's important to your students. This would be a good thing to do at the beginning of the year or maybe at the end of the year. You could let students like give advice to kids coming in the next year. Um, but at the beginning of the year, you could just kind of give them that space, that Cordell to put to put their own stamp on your classroom. You can invite them to bring in postcards from places they've been or photographs of themselves doing something that makes them happy or quotes they love and hang those all up on the Cordell. Then you can eventually use those as a writing prompt. Um, they can snag somebody else's photo or somebody else's quote and write from it or you can just leave them there to just kind of, you know, bring the presence of your students into the room at the beginning of the year. All right, number nine, you can use your Cordell for six-word memoirs. Start by hanging one six-word memoir in the middle of your Cordell. I suggest you start with Ernest Hemingway's super simple, um, <laughs> well, not exactly super simple, but I just mean your Cordell will look super simple because you'll have one thing on there, for sale, baby shoes never worn. 
then invite students to create their own and hang them up. From there, maybe they select somebody else's six-word memoir and use it as inspiration for a short story project. Or maybe they grab two and write a dialogue between the person who wrote this one and the person who wrote that one. What would happen if if these two background stories came together um, into a conversation? There, there are so many different ways you could use those six-word memoirs once you had them up. Number 10, use your Cordell to help teach and scaffold the sketch noting process. I have noticed more and more interest growing in the teaching community around sketch notes. It is such a powerful method. Um, it, it turns note taking into a really critical thinking exercise and makes note taking more memorable. Um, but for many students, it's kind of a struggle, right? They're not, they don't really know how do they integrate all these visual pieces. That's okay. <laughs> Your Cordell can be a great tool for this. The educator Sylvia Duckworth has so many amazing resources on her site of these pages of different icons that you could print out and hang on the Cordell and then students could, could grab a little page of inspiring options. So maybe they don't really have any idea what to draw. They can grab a page of icons and just sort of see, okay, this is how I could make a border. This is how I could create like a tiny light bulb when I want to draw attention to an idea in my notes. This is how I could draw a, a figure in a way that's really simple and easy and isn't going to take me much time. And then the other thing you can do is pull examples. So like we were talking about with mentor text, you can have mentor text of sketch notes. You can either print out amazing sketch notes from online. You can integrate student models as students get better at it. And they don't all have to be a certain way, right? A model doesn't have to be one from your student who's the best artist in the world. A model could be one that a student feels really helps them remember the material and incorporate some of the strategies from the Cordell. So you could hang a model of a student who created sketch notes using some of Sylvia Duckworth's icons and hang it right next to those icons so that other students could see like, oh, hey, they, they used that idea and that idea and they integrated it with their own imagination to create this page. Um, and then again, like students can pull, can even pull each other's examples to sit with at their desk as they're creating sketch notes just as a model and as inspiration. Okay, number 11, you can use your Cordell to inspire discussion. So maybe along the way, as you're reading a whole class text, students are coming up with interesting questions, they're making interesting comments at times when it's not really discussion time. It's not a whole class discussion, but you love what they're saying, you want to return to it, you can have students just grab a note card, write down their question, write down their idea, um, write down their connection, and put it on the Cordell. And then when it is time for a whole class discussion, you can say, all right, everybody stand up, go over to the Cordell, like look at what everybody's been contributing, and maybe grab a card, a card that you didn't write, and take it back to your desk and try to bring up that idea in the discussion, try to ask that question. Um, it takes off some of the pressure for kids when they want to contribute to the discussion, but maybe they're a little shy to say their own thing. To read somebody else's thing is not very stressful. It doesn't put you on the line, but it does It does give you practice in getting into the discussion. So that can be a good way to help um, maybe more reserved students to participate is just to read somebody else's question. That can help get them warmed up into the group. All right, number 12 Hang writing prompts. Search out things that inspire you. It could be a Dear Abby column. It could be a Polaroid, a postcard, a funny advertisement, a piece of poetry. You can be hanging all that stuff on the Cordell any old time, and students can be too. And then when it's time for just a free write, you can say, all right, everybody stand up. Grab a, a postcard or a column or a picture or an ad from the Cordell and bring it back to your desk and use it as the basis of your writing. Number 13, use your Cordell to experiment with reviews. This is a little bit like the infographic project model that I was talking about, but I think this could also be really fun with reviews. If you want to teach your students to write a good review, 
have them bring in their favorite review that they can find, whether it's for a pair of shoes or a book or a um, smoothie shop or a store, (laughs) whatever. Have them print it out and bring it in and hang them up all over your Cordell's. Then have them walk along and see all these reviews, read all these reviews, use what they're learning to generate an anchor chart of what works well in a review, right? They're seeing all these different ones in different genres. They're seeing them all together. Which ones actually help them? Which ones actually make them interested and connect with them and and have them generate those ideas and then have them write reviews of their own using what they've learned. They can pull mentor text off the Cordell to to have with them at their desk as they're writing um, and then have them hang their reviews up on the Cordell too, right? And compare and kind of see what have they learned? What are they doing the same? What are they doing better than the ones that they have up already? Number 14, use your Cordell to showcase current events. I think we've all had the experience where we want to bring more things to our students' attention, right? More news articles, more TED Talks, more podcasts, more Pulitzer Prize winning um, opinion columns. There's just so much out there. When you find something amazing, generate a QR code and a quick blurb and hang it up on your Cordell and invite students to do the same. And then when you have the chance, maybe for a bell ringer or for one station, when you have a lot going on or for early finisher tasks, you can invite students to go and check out what's going on um, on the Cordell. Okay, number 15, create a group piece. This this one is exciting to me as, as an arts um I guess, arts integration, just like I originally learned about this concept from Eileen. Um, There are so many ways you could use a Cordell to to go deeper with creative work. So let's let's walk through one example. Um, A project that I often see teachers do is called The Best Part of Me. It's such a neat project. Students take a picture of like their eyebrow (laughs) or their mouth or their their fingers, right? And they write about why that's the best part of me. So let's say you were doing this with a Cordell. They take their picture, they they put it up. You give students a chance to walk along and see all these best parts of me. Then they do their writing. They write about why it's the best part of them. They hang it up next to their picture. Students walk around, see everybody's writing. Then maybe you invite students, you you photocopy the writing and you hang that up on the Cordell and you invite everybody to grab somebody else's and create a blackout poem based on somebody else's and then hang that up. So the, So then you have the visual, then you have the writing, then you have a blackout poem created by somebody else. Then maybe you invite students to take um, that blackout poem and write a short story based on somebody else's blackout poem and you hang that up, right? You can, there are so many ways that you could kind of mix and match and layer with what you have on the Cordell. Maybe you don't start with the best part of me. Maybe, maybe you start with some completely other thing. Um, maybe you have students bring in a really striking visual of a person that they find somewhere. It can be their own photograph. It can be a painting. It can be a sketch. And they hang those up in groups. Maybe they take those characters and they turn it into a one-act play. And they write their one-act play. And then they they hang up one page from their one-act play. And another group comes and gets their one page from that one-act play. And they they write what they think would happen next or whatever, right? You just, because you can put it all up for everybody to see so easily, you can create so many different intriguing layers. And I think that's just what makes the Cordell so exciting. There are are so many ways to use it. So we have been through 15 and I hope you are feeling excited about it and inspired about it like I am. I'm feeling very happy. Um, Despite the fact that I had to record this episode twice because I got so excited the first time that I talked way too close to the microphone. (laughs) And the sound quality was terrible. Um, So here I am doing it again, and I'm still happy and I'm still excited about it. I'd love to see a Cordell or maybe five in every ELA classroom and in a whole lot of school hallways too. I think this would be a wonderful thing to have out in front of the library or out where students are just coming in, somewhere where parents can see it. There are just so many ways to use it. 
Um, the great thing about Cordell's is that they allow you to bring visuals and multimedia into a lesson. They, they help you create choice and scaffolds for so many different types of assignments. They inspire creativity and they just, it, they just take a few minutes and that's super helpful in this busy life of education to be able to, to layer in those visuals with the, that quick clip instead of creating this whole elaborate thing that takes you a couple of hours. So I hope you will try this. I hope you will let me know how it goes on Instagram or in our Facebook group or by email. And uh, thanks for being here. All right, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to check out the visuals from today's episode and any related links, you will find them over at nowsparkcreativity.com. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative.